Hey everybody, what's happening out there in YouTube land? This is Phil Chambers here from No Apologies and I just wanted to share a couple of articles with you today. If we want to know why the Did God Really Say conference is needed, we could look no further than just a many, many articles. I've got a couple that I just want to read to you here and it starts with this one here that says, Harvard's new chief chaplain does not believe in God. Let's have a read and comment on the way through, see how we go. And here he is, uh, the uh, non-God-believing chaplain himself. In a move that trend watchers say reflects millennial spirituality, whatever that means, there's no definition for what a millennial spirituality might mean, but it's probably something uh, postmodern, post-human even in its philosophy. Harvard University's chaplain corps is now led by a humanist. So folks, areas that were typically led by Christians and specific religious leaders now have secularists leading the spiritual side of universities. Greg Epstein, who became the school's first humanist chaplain in 2005, was unanimously elected to coordinate a 40-member team. So whoever did that election, there's enough people on there who are voting up that's groundswell, I would suggest. The 44-year-old, called the godfather of the humanist movement, wrote the best-selling book, Good Without God, What a Billion Non-Religious People Do Believe. And that's always the way it is, uh, isn't it? We can be good without God. Um, Epstein's colleagues and the students he mentors say the chaplain encourages interfaith dialogue and helps people explore life's big issues. Other questions, others question his appointment at a university with deep religious roots, and Harvard does have deep religious roots. The chaplain, Greg Epstein, says, we don't look to God for answers. Greg Epstein, who also served as a chaplain at the nearby MIT, isn't necessarily an unconventional choice, say colleagues. Margit Hamstrom, Harvard's Christian science chaplain, told the New York Times, Maybe in a more conservative university climate, there might be a question like, what the heck are they doing at Harvard? In fact, I say that myself. What the heck are they doing at Harvard? But in this environment, it works. I posit, no, it doesn't. Not really. It's only going to be providing band-aid solutions where the gospel should be front and center of solving people's problems. First of all, their problem with their relationship with God Almighty. God is known for wanting to keep lines of communication open between different faiths. I'm sure coexist is very strong there. On Harvard's campus, chaplains have a visible presence, hosting dinners, providing counseling, and reporting direct to the president's office. Student Adele Gold Goldenboig, student Adele Goldenboig, says Epstein, showed me that it's possible to find community outside a traditional religious context that you can have the value-add religion has provided for centuries, which is that it's there when things seem chaotic. So what people are looking for and going is really feel-good counseling when what we know of true Christianity is that it's never about feel-good. It's actually about get to the heart of the matter, your sin and uh, your separation from God is not... Uh, mentioned by the student as the value add, just the idea that you can find some community and some feel good outside of a traditional religious context. The leadership Epstein provides isn't about theology, says student Charlotte Nickerson. It's about cooperation between people of different faiths and bringing together people who wouldn't normally consider themselves religious. Then certainly it's not, and the depth that people have there is only going to be a surface depth anyway, based on um, feelings and camaraderie. And you can do a lot with those, and I'm not saying those are not valuable things, but that's not, or I would suggest that's not what Christian chaplaincy should be about, and chaplaincy in general. Epstein explains, we don't look to God for answers, and I think that sums it up. We don't look to God for answers. We will look to men for answers, and blind will follow blind, and they will both end up in a ditch. We are each other's answers. Hmm. 
self-fulfilling prophecy there. If you don't know the answer, you ask someone else who doesn't know the answer, and together you both won't know the answer, but you will be each other's answer. AJ Kumar, who led a grad student humanist group on campus, said, being able to find values and rituals, but not having to be leave in magic, that's a powerful thing. No irony there at all, of course. This move reflects belief of young Americans. According to a recent study, Harvard freshmen are twice as likely as their peers to be atheist or agnostic. But throughout America, young people are increasingly identifying as non-religious, also known as nuns, or as spiritual but unaffiliated with a particular religion. And again, no one really defines what spiritual means in those times uh, and, and in documents like that. Among millennials, an estimated 40% now consider themselves to be nuns. That doesn't mean young people aren't searching and questioning, however. Says Epstein, there is a rising group of people who no longer identify with any religious tradition, but still experience a real need for conversation and support around what it means to be a good human and live an ethical life. Well, that's been a trope in Australia for a lot of years. Uh, those who didn't want in Australian primary school uh, elementary school for those in the States, but primary school here, um, to have religious education uh, brought into the idea of having ethical sessions for students, ethical uh, specialist classes, when the religious education classes were on. So people are wanting to prove how good they are without God. Um, one thing I'll point to now is how to sign up for the conference. It's very easy. Uh, just go to the Did God Really Say YouTube page on, uh, on YouTube, obviously. The link will be down below in the chat. And you can just subscribe right there. Easy to do. So that was Greg Epstein. And here's another article as well from a different angle, one from Australia that talks about a GP, which is a standard doctor, general practitioner, accused of endorsing genocide to face a tribunal. Um, we'll look into this and see that that's not what he advocated at all. The case against a GP who has not worked for two years after being suspended under emergency powers for allegedly posting tirades against the LGBTIQ plus people and abortion doctors will apparently go ahead next year. That's Dr. Jareth Koch. Uh, Dr. Jareth Koch has always denied any wrongdoing, claiming that the Medical Board of Australia has misconstrued his comments, misconstrued his comments, and that his conduct posed no threat to patient safety. Last week, the Human Rights Law Alliance, the firm defending Dr. Koch, said it had been told it had been told the board had concluded its investigation and in mid to late 2022, 2022, it would prosecute him for professional misconduct before the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Oops, sorry about that. Known for its role in campaigning against same-sex marriage in Australia, the firm claimed Dr. Cox's case was a major test of doctors' freedom of speech. It's taken two years, it said in a statement on Friday. So for the last two years, uh, Jareth, Dr. Jareth, has had no employment and no income from his medical profession. He has lost his practice and his clients and had no, has had no, has had to, pardon me, has had to find other ways of supporting his family. So this poor guy is in desperate straits while waiting for tribunals to get through their basic preliminary work. I'm sure they're not in a hurry to go quickly. Not because of his medical practice. Not because of his patient care. But because, he, because a faceless activist complained about his personal social media posts. And folks, that's exactly why it's important for us to look at this conference, Did God Really Say?, to realize what these voices around the world um, <clears throat> on social media, coming into churches as well, people that we meet, uh, influencing our friends and our children and our families, what it is they're on about. Um, Dr. Koch, a GP in Melbourne, was originally suspended in August 2019 by the Medical Board to maintain public confidence in the provision of health services. 
What an amazing thing. He can't have an opinion, and if he does have a private opinion, he has to be banned to maintain public confidence in the provision of health services after it began investigating 30 comments he had posted on social media forums over a number of years. It alleged the statements which, had, which it had not made public, so we don't get to see them, were denigrating, demeaning, and slurring to doctors providing terminations and treating transgender patients. It also said that he had voiced sentiments of violence by calling for genocide towards racial and religious groups. Now, this is their words, not his. Again, we aren't able to see his statements because they have not made them public. Dr. Koch applied for the emergency su suppression to be lifted last year, pending a formal hearing into his case. But the application was rejected by VCAT, um, which ruled public confidence in doctors would be significantly undermined if he were permitted to continue to practice. And again, this is all hearsay and internal bickering of the doctor's um, union. His case has been taken up by various Christian groups, including the so-called right-wing Australian Christian lobby. Now, there's nothing really right-wing per se about the Australian Christian lobby. Uh, a lot of good work comes out of them, and it's natural, I would suggest, for the uh, medical publication that this is from to label the ACL uh, right-wing as a, a way of trying to identify uh, with its left-wing um, protagonist medical people inside the system. Uh, so the ACL, which has claimed he was suspended for his religious views, which is probably right. An online crowdfunding campaign by ACL raised $53,000 for his defense. Go ACL! In its statement, the Human Rights Law Alliance, which is closely linked to the ACL, said that until 2019, Dr. Koch was widely recognized as a good doctor. For almost 15 years, he's practiced medicine in as a GP in Melbourne and did his job well. He was liked and respected by his colleagues and patients and never received any complaints about his clinical practice. It added, this case provides the opportunity to push back against cancel culture. And that's something that'll be brought up quite a bit if you've heard of cancel culture, um, dealing with the uh, woke uh, extreme and the woke um, establishment culture. Uh, come to the conference and find out to ensure that re regulators and employers can't unfairly punish personal speech and expression, to challenge draconian over-regulation, and to ensure that Christians have freedoms to continue to speak their faith and convictions in public without losing their jobs. In response to questions, an AHPRA spokesman confirmed that the investigation into Dr. Koch had concluded and his case had been referred to the tribunal. The board is legally obliged to refer a matter to the tribunal if it forms the reasonable belief that the practitioner has engaged in professional misconduct. So here a doctor's personal opinions and his religious framed views, which again uh, have not been made public, can be deemed as professional misconduct. So for those people who are thinking, wow, should Christians get involved in this social tiff that's around the world at the moment, uh, when your personal religious point of view can be deemed by your industry as professional misconduct away from your work, there's a lot to be said about uh, learning to identify where those voices are coming from. The hearing is yet to be made as reflected on the National Register of Practice, uh, Practitioners, Dr. Koch remains suspended. So this poor guy, for having views which we aren't allowed to see, about uh, same-sex marriage and LGB LGBTQTI plus people is now struggling to find an income um, away from his trained profession uh, because that was his personal opinion taken uh, offence at by his uh, very left-wing and very woke medical industry. So folks, these things are all around us. Again, if you uh, want to get on board with the conference, please do. Um, the link again will be down below in the descriptions. And if you want to read some more uh, when you get to where we are. Oh, has this ever happened to you? Yes, it has. That's Josh's video there. Thanks, Josh. Um, we would like to see down here that there's uh, links to the conference itself, links to go fund the conference, 
and to the No Apologies channel if you can jump on there and subscribe and jump on to Fighting for the Faith to join their crew and subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. So uh, for now, uh, when we look back at the fact that uh, Harvard is no longer having uh, anyone who believes in God as their, their chaplain and that's informing the views of, of young people going through university and uh, Christians who are just stating their their own religious views uh, are being stood down and rough handled by their industries and organizations. Um, so we ask you to join us in this, join us in prayer, join us in, in fact, come on board to the conference and spread the word with your family, friends, church members and colleagues. But for now, I just want to say thanks for watching this Think Bite and uh, God bless. We'll catch you later on.